Hi guys, so this is Reading with the Twins, and I'm Shani, and my twin is um, Shanika. And so I'm just going to explain to you guys how our channel is going to work. So if you guys don't want to read yourself, we will be reading basically to you. And how it's going to work is that we both have separate different books, and um, every chat, eh, I mean, every video we make will be one chapter of the book we read. So that way you can have breaks between every chapter that we read. And obviously these books are appropriate for any age. And yep. And um, we are going to be reading different types of books. And if you, want, if you want us to read a certain book, just comment it down below. And um, yep, so let's get started. So... Um, I'm very sorry if you don't understand what I'm saying or what I'm reading in some parts. Um, you can just comment down below and I will do it better and I'll recreate the video again for you. Um, so the book we're going to be reading, sorry about that. Um, so I was saying that the book that we are reading is Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Cabin Fever. Cabin Fever. It's from... Jeff Kinney. I don't know if I'm saying Kinney right, but um, yep. So as also what I was saying is I'm very sorry if I don't read anything right. Just comment down below and I'll recreate the video better. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to be reading chapter one in this video and then chapter two in um, another video. Okay, so this is the page and it's basically like a diary. So, um, November, this is in November and on Saturday. Most people look forward to the holidays, but the stretch between Thanksgiving and Christmas just makes me, ner make, makes me a nervous wreck. If you make a mistake in the first 11 months of the year, it's no big deal. But if you do something wrong during the holiday season, you're going to pay for it. Maybe you wouldn't got more presents. You would have got more presents if you hadn't pinched your brother last week. It's too much pressure to be on your best behaviour for a whole month. The most I can really handle is six or seven days in a row. So if they moved, so if they moved Thanksgiving to the week before Christmas, it would be fine by ma by me. Kids whose families don't celebrate Christmas are lucky because they don't have to stress stress out whenever they do something wrong at this time of year. In fact, I have a few friends in that category who I think act a little extra jerky around now just because they can. Yeah. Oops. Trip. The thing that really makes me nervous is the whole Santa issue. The fact that he can see you when when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake really creeps me out. So I've started wearing sweatpants to bed because I don't really need Santa seeing me in my underwear. I'm not really convinced that Santa has the time to keep an eye on you 24 hours a day anyway. I figure he can only check in on each kid once or twice a year for a few seconds. And with my luck, that happens at the most embarrassing moments. That's disgusting. That's what Santa's saying. Right there. If Santa really does see everyone you do, then I could be in trouble. So when I write to him, I don't say what I want for Christmas and all that. I use my letters to paint myself in the best possible light. Dear Santa, I did not throw a crab apple at Mrs. Taylor's cat. 
even though it might have looked that way from a distance. Sincerely, Greg Hefley. That is a letter down there. Then there's this naughty or nice list they're always talking about. You hear about it, but you never actually get to see it. So it's up to grown-ups to tell you where you stand at any given moment. And something about that just doesn't seem right. I'm going to read that part. If you help me with these groceries, I'll bet it will be just enough to make Santa's nice list. I kind of wonder how accurate the list really is anyways. There's a kid named Jared Pyle who lives up the street from me. And if there's anyone who deserves to be on the naughty list, it's him. But last year he got a duck bite for Christmas. So don't even ask me what Santa was thinking on that one. It's it's not just Santa I've got to worry about either. Last year, when Mum was going through some old boxes, she found a homemade doll from her childhood. Mum said the doll is called Santa's Scout and that his job is to watch how kids behave and then report back to Santa at the North Pole. This is Santa's Scout that they were talking about. Well, I'm not a fan of that idea. First of all, I think you have a right to privacy in your own home. And second, Santa Scouts give me the willies. Shudder, shudder. I don't really buy the idea that this stall is feeding Santa information. But just in case, I try to be extra good whenever I'm in the same room as Santa Scout. Santa Scout. May I clean everyone's plates? Why? How thoughtful of you. But it probably doesn't matter anyway, because my older brother Roderick is constantly feeding Santa Scout, Santa Scout bad information about you. I, Greg Hefley, took a $20 bill out of my mother's purse. Every morning when I wake up, Santa Scouts is in a new place, which I guess is, is supposed to prove that he travelled to the North Pole overnight. But I'm starting to wonder if it's really Roderick, Roderick who moves in on Sunday. Today we took all our Christmas decorations out of the storage room in the basement. We have boxes full of ornaments and some of them are pretty old. There's one with a picture of me and Roderick taking a bath in a sink that really, that's really embarrassing. But Mother won't let me throw it out. That's the picture. We put up the, the tree in the living room and started and started hanging ornaments on it. My little brother Manny was taking a nap upstairs and when he woke up and found out we were, dec we were decorating the tree without him, he had a total meltdown. The reason Manny was so upset was because someone had hung his favourite ornament. This candy cane he really likes. So Mum took it off the tree and handed it to Manny to hand up himself. But Manny wanted his ornament to be the first one on the tree. So that meant we had to take all the decorations down just so we could get his way. And that's just the kind of thing that happens in my house every single day. Mum hasn't started to use the threat of Santa as a way of getting Manny to behave. But I'm sure she will soon. I don't think it's such a good strategy for keeping us in line, though. Because the second Christmas is over, Mum doesn't have any real leverage. Well, the Easter Bunny is going to be very disappointed in you, boys. Monday. 
Right before Thanksgiving break, there was a contest at school to see who could come up with the best anti-bullying slogan. And the grand prize was a pizza party for the winning team. This was one of the slogans. I will read it. Only you can stop bullying. For my team of up to five people and come up with the best anti-bullying slogan. The winning team will get a pizza party in the caf- in the cafeteria. Let's make bullying extinct. Everyone went to that pizza party and people didn't care what they had to do to win it. Two groups of girls in my grade came up with slogans that were really similar, and each group accused the other one of stealing their ideas. I don't think you guys can really see it, but I'll read the two girls. One, of, one sorry. One of their ones says, bullies are mean, and the other one says, bullies are meanies. The whole situation spun out of control, and eventually the vice principal had to step in to stop it from turning into a full scale riot. Our school only has one legitimate legitimate bully this year anyway and his name is Dennis Root and with all the signs and posters everywhere I'm pretty sure the message is getting through to him. The day before Thanksgiving there was a big anti-bullying assembly and everyone in the auditorium was looking at Dennis the whole time. I kind of felt sorry for him, so I tried to make him feel better. Even though Dennis is the only real bully in our school this year, we had a bunch of them last year, people were constantly getting picked on at recess. So the teachers set up a station on the playground where kids could press a button if they needed to get a grown-up's attention. A grown-up's attention. Well, the Tal A teacher station just ended up being a convenient place for the bullies to hang out to, to find their next victims. The teachers say teasing counts as bullying too, but I don't think there's any way they're going to put a stop to that. Kids are always calling each other names and that kind of thing at my school. In fact, one of the reasons I try to stay under the ra- radar is because I don't want to end up getting stuck stuck with a nickname like Cody Johnson did. In kindergarten, Cody stepped in some dog poop at recess and ever since then, people have called him Dookie. And I'm not just talking about the kids. Either I'm talking e- the kids either. I'm talking about the teachers, the teachers, and sorry, as I was um saying, I'm talking about the teachers and even the principals. Congratulations to do congratulations to Dookie Johnson for getting straight A's in the third quarter. That was one of the teachers saying that. I tell you this, if I ever get a nickname, a nickname like Dookie, I'll move to a different town. Um, so guys, um, I kind of went off time because the video's a maximum of, we're trying to do a maximum of six minutes. But um, I'm really sorry and... I just realised that in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, it doesn't really have chapters where it says chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. So I'm just going to put this as chapter one and we'll read like 10, 11 pages for every chapter and every video that I do of Diary of a Wimpy Kid because I realised there's not really chapters. Um so yeah please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next um video where i do the next chapter 
and um bye and oh yes also one more thing sorry um so we might do AS asmr videos on here but um yep bye have a lovely day evening morning and yep